It's time to talk about music. And I'm going to show you how to bring your still pictures to life. Before we track your flights the right way. Yeah, it's time for iOS Today. Today. iOS Today comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is, is Twit. Twit. iOS Today is brought to you this week by Mint Mobile. They provide the same premium network coverage you're used to, but at a fraction of the cost because everything is online. Mint Mobile makes it easy to cut your wireless bill down to just $15 a month with their three-month introductory plan. Plus, get the SIM shipped to your door free at mintmobile.com slash iOS. And by Casper. Casper is a sleep brand that makes expertly designed products to help you get your best rest one night at a time. Get $100 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash iOS today and using the promo code iOS today at checkout. And by Zapier. Zapier connects all your business software and handles the work for you so you can focus on what matters most. Right now through the end of the month, go to zapier.com slash iOS for your free 14-day trial. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I give you Micah Sargent. And I give you Leo Laporte. <laughs> Welcome to iOS Today. This is the show where we talk about the iPhone, mm -hmm. the iPad, mm. the Apple Watch, the <sighs> Apple TV, CarPlay, if we've got it. It is a show. And Pot maybe, OS. Actually, you know what? The home potamus should count. Should count. <laughs> the home of home home potamus should count. That's a that's an iOS device. Yeah, home pot OS. Yeah. You know, in this world, <laughs> it's important to sanitize. Mm. And I just wanted a little uh, a little uh, public service announcement before we get underway. I have wiped everything down with Clorox hospital wipes. And uh, what I read something this morning that scared the hell out of me. Now, you have a phone sanitizer. I do. UV. Yeah. 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 So you use that? Yeah. So at home, uh, it's it's called a phone soap. And you open it up. It's got a glass compartment on the top and the bottom with two UV lights in it. You put your phone in. You put it down. It bzzz, and then you can take and your that phone And that works. Yeah, and I've used my wallet. I've used all sorts of the things. nice thing about that is it's very dry. And yeah, you can use it on leather or whatever else you've got. Um, I read this morning that the coronavirus can live for up to nine days on a glass surface like your phone. Yummy. Nine days. So I hadn't been sanitizing my phone. I've been washing my hands like a, you know, a good American and <laughs> not touching my face when I can remember it and all of that stuff. By the way, you don't need to wear masks unless you're sick. Exactly. Surgeon General says, stop buying masks. We need them for hospital workers. But I do think it's important to start sanitizing your phone. You can use any kind of wipes. I got these... Uh, when we had a little intestinal bug making its rounds at Twit, these are Clorox Healthcare hydrogen peroxide disinfectant wipes. I imagine any disinfectant wipe would work, but these are specifically designed to be antiviral, anti coronavirus. Read the instructions if you're using wipes carefully, because in almost every case you have to leave you have to leave it wet mm -hmm. for a period of time. In this case, 30 seconds. So these are really damp, but I don't think they're harmful to the phone. Right. You you wipe everything. I'm gonna I wipe the inside of the case, the outside of the case, the back of the phone, and you let it dry. Okay, for 30 seconds. Same thing with the iPad. Same thing with keyboards. keyboards right? Especially. Yeah. So uh, that's just a little public service announcement. We're all trying to stay well, not get uh, any bug. Did you see Steve Wozniak? What a, oh, brother. He he tweeted that he and his wife Janet in January came back from a visit to Asia with really a bad flu and cough. And he said, we might have been patient zero. Why would you say that? <laughs> he Janet was diagnosed with a sinus infection. <laughs> Uh, but no, but at, at that time, nobody did. Yeah, good idea. Nobody did coronavirus testing. And uh, in fact, it's still hard to get coronavirus testing, unfortunately. And so nobody knows if that's what they had or not. Um, but maybe maybe we should just take a chill pill. Mm -hmm. 
Relax for a moment and think. And just wash your hands. Breathe, That's wash your GD wash. hands. <laughs> <laughs> yes, which you should be doing anyway. Yeah, you know what? I don't get sick very often, and I and I think it's really because I I am kind of obsessive about washing my hands. I started doing that a few years ago. Plus, I carry with me, as you yes, well know, a hanky. I got mine too. So uh, I dry. You know, it's fine to use a paper towel to dry your hands, but I want to save a tree. And then, of course, because I have the hanky at all times, I use that to open the door, the John, and. Not to touch anything on Absolutely. the way out. And well, I, and two, uh, there have been there have been several studies that show that um, those air dryers can blast viral spores onto your skin. <laughs> they're terrible. Uh, they're not good. <laughs> they're terrible. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and I and I like the idea of, of saving the earth a little bit. I don't want to use up any power or any you know, paper trees or, or anything. So. I carry my hanky. I learned about that in Japan. They don't put anything in the Japanese men's rooms. So just and like, I learned about it from you. And yeah, because everybody in Japan has a hanky. Hanky. Hanky's Hanky are good. No, not yes. Hanky's yes. good. Yeah. Hanky's are good. Uh, so I thought... Somebody you, said 20 minutes. No. 20 minutes? No, I think it's 20. No. It's 30 seconds. Uh, but read the directions. 20 minutes would be a long time. It dries long before then. So, I don't know. Read the, read the instructions. I can't read them, but... Uh, 30 second contact time for bacteria. Oh, or one minute. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wow. Virus is, yeah, 30 second. For coronavirus, 30 seconds. Uh, mold and fungi, five minutes. Ah. Virus for norovirus, three minutes. Wow. So, you know what? Let it dry. Don't, <laughs> don't dry it off. Let yeah. it dry. Uh, but it says it on the back, and you can read it. And these. Um, these are hydrogen peroxide, so they're pretty mild. It's not it's not bleach. It's not uh, alcohol. It's hydrogen peroxide. I find that interesting. Are the, what are the other active ingredients? Is it just hydrogen peroxide? Well, Clorox says it's formulated with patented hydrogen peroxide technology. <laughs> I, I, I actually read up on what to use, not for coronavirus, but for uh, for a norovirus. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what they recommended. So Interesting. Yeah. Because... It's not bleach. One of the good things about hydrogen peroxide is our bodies are naturally predisposed it's not toxic, to toxic, right? To well, no, our, it is. Well, don't drink it, right? So here's the thing: <laughs> you know when you pour hydrogen peroxide on your f flesh and yeah. like on a cut and it bubbles, yeah, that's actually because your body is trying to break down the hydrogen peroxide oh, into hydrogen because oxygen. hydrogen peroxide is not good for you. So it's good for getting things out of a wound. Uh, it and is so, the foaming action. Yeah. yeah, and so that's why I find this interesting is because usually you'd use alcohol or some other cleaner to clean the wound, <laughs> and hydrogen peroxide to what is it? bride the wound. Yeah. So it's interesting. I didn't realize that it had it also has an actual any, any destroying yeah, antibacterial yeah. properties. Cool. Anyway. You wow. know, you know what I love about you, Micah? You're just a mini me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you're gonna you're taking this network over. There won't be any money in it for you, but uh, you're taking this <laughs> network over. Just a little mini Leo. He knows all this stuff. <sighs> So, uh, so why do we have that? That is a cool looking thing. What the hell is So this is the HomePod, Apple's yes. device. What is this? This it's is giant. The, this giant thing with the weird lips. This is the Echo <laughs> Studio. Oh, that's yeah. the new Amazon Echo that has, does it have better sound? Do you like it? It does have better sound. Yeah. Now, it has what they call 3D sound, uh, which, exactly, that gimmick. face. Yeah. Gimmick. Uh, it is a gimmick. Uh, a gimmick. Apparently, by playing the 3D yeah. sound, yeah, the hootie booty Spatial. Uh, yeah, it's got spatial sound in it that's supposed to make it sound like you're actually there and blah, 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 blah. Does it? Apple's, no. no. Apple's HomePod claimed the same thing. They all say Without that. having it. But this is the thing about the HomePod, yeah. or the HomePod, the Echo Studio, is that you have to have an Amazon Music Unlimited HD <sighs> subscription. To really benefit. In order to play that 3D music. Ah. So. Which I have, I bought. Yeah, exactly. This whole episode is kind of about how we listen to music and in the different ways we listen to music and what we use to do so. And so in my home, listening to music from this is quite nice. I actually use this. Um, the, the dogs are going to be upset. I use this. Oh, you took. Henry took, and Misty's music away? I took Henry and Mizzy's... What do you play, Mizzy? Uh, what do they, you play for them? I play classical music. Oh. And here's why. So people are like, why are you playing music for your dog? It's not that they... I know they don't know what's playing. It's about a constant sound in the background that isn't little kids running around outside that make them bark and the, the delivery person knocking on the door and that kind of stuff. That plays... They hear that in the foreground and then they don't get all nervous and anxious oh, about good. people coming to all the All the little intermittent sounds. Yeah. So both the HomePod... 
and this Amazon Echo Studio are designed to make it spatial by tuning. They have tweeters, which are very directional, all the way around on the HomePod. I presume it's the same on the Echo. And so they tune the music to do that. And one of the things they're trying to do is bounce, bounce it off walls. So this is maybe not the best test because it's kind of in an open, very open space. Yeah. So maybe if you put it in your kitchen, uh, in you know, kind I have of in the it corner, in, uh, it might sound a little bit more exactly. spatial. It sits yeah. at the corner in my yeah, kitchen. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. And sort of blasts the sound outward. And so like we're not giving it a fair test, actually. It, but it sounds good. I just don't think it's anything special, but I never thought that about the HomePod either. Right. The HomePod sounds good, and especially for how small it is, it puts out some really Lisa loud loves sound. It. I, I do have to say that this studio sounds as good as my Google Home Max, which I thought oh. was the best of all the wired uh, you know, uh, voice assistant uh, speakers that I have. So, Kevin, can you show that uh, display of, of the different tweeters that are inside? Because this one has them the, the all, the way has around. Them all the way around. Yeah. It looks like you've got four facing out. Yeah. You've got a, what a woofer facing down. And I think there's another. Is yeah, that that's another actually upside down. So Oh, I the the. Oh no, that's that's this way. Cause see, there's the lip on the bottom. Oh, that's the Amazon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I yeah. see. It has a port. I'm sorry, you're right. I would thought we were looking at this. Oh, at the HomePod. <laughs> at the HomePod, because the HomePod fires down with its base. Yeah. Um, this one uh, has some ports for the base. And that's and then, the big speaker in the bottom. That's actually a pretty nice setup, given the price. Yeah, I agree. You've got it looks like uh, three or four tweeters and a and a sub. And the microphone arrays are on the top here. Yeah. It doesn't show it there, but. And you can turn off the microphone if you don't like the idea Which is of it something you listening to There's you. no hardware switch for the microphone on the HomePod. No. You know, I never thought about that, no. that HomePod doesn't have a hardware switch like yeah. that. Huh. That's interesting. Given I think Apple's I privacy honestly, uh, you know, I have a lot of Sonos gear, but uh, I think this is a much better choice. I, what I like is that I can, I can listen to, so I use Audible a lot. And I move throughout my home as I'm listening to Audible. That's I've the got best Echo reason to have stuff. an Echo device is because yeah. you can listen to your uh, audio books. Exactly. Yeah. And so in each room, I've got some sort of Echo device that can just play it so I can move throughout the mm, house. And I might have know. to... Uh <laughs> think about that. Yeah, move into your apartment. <laughs> the Echo Show, uh, the the screen, it's not as good as the Google, um, no. but it is... Uh, it's decent. It's that's decent. what I mostly listen to because that's what's in our kitchen. Yeah, and the fact that, like I said, they all can connect together and create multi-room audio, that's what makes it pretty great. So I have been using Sonos for a long time. We have Sonos here in the studio. In fact, when I got here, John was listening to some Umphreys McGee, and the, now those speakers are up mounted up on, on the ceiling. But they're everywhere, and it's nice. John could turn it on, put it in party mode. You can be doing work everywhere in the studio and the whole office and the complex. And and as you know, we have a massive office complex sp uh, spanning yes. four different buildings mm -hmm. and three different counties. But One uh, has, uh, it's just full of candy. Yeah, that's the candy building, we call that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should get rid of the candy building before we talk about, you know, turning off the lights in the no, studio. never. <laughs> the candy building stays. Never. <laughs> uh, so I think that that, that that all, you know, whole home sound is great. The party mode, is, as Sonos calls it, is great. And now that you could do that on other speakers, I think that might be the, 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 the place to go. The Especially price. given the functionality mm -hmm. uh, across the board with the speech. The, you have some with screens. You uh, you can get little ones, you can get big ones. I don't know. know if you had a chance to see my uh, review of the Amazon Smart Oven, but uh, perfect you can example. Use this to yeah. talk to the Amazon Smart yeah. Oven, and it'll say, "Oh, your food's ready whenever it's ready." Love or, that. You know, set a, a pre timer and everything. Anybody like want to buy some used Sonos equipment? <laughs> yeah, I just saw they're doing or they're selling refurbs of the devices that they're about to. Uh, I nice. don't. I don't. I don't like that. Sonos nice. don't Sonos. like that. So what do you, uh, so we all have many choices these days in streaming mm -hmm. music. By the way, very good news. I felt guilty listening to Spotify or other streaming music services because people like Taylor Swift have complained oh. that they make so little money out of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I just saw a report that actually streaming music has saved the music industry, that revenues were historically high last year, mm. and 90% of it comes from streaming music. People stopped buying music a few years ago, and rec when record sales tanked, so did revenue. So a lot of artists, you know, had to sell one or two of their mansions, and they, you know, the swimming pools were downsized. <laughs> they had to sell the candy room. <laughs> sell the candy room. But uh, and I and I was really feeling bad about using streaming music. But the really good news is streaming music now pumps a lot of money into the music industry. Now 
we could talk about the inequitous distribution right in the in, inequitable distribution in the music industry that's another issue for another day but at least the music industry has bounced back mm -hmm. revenues are great and, it'll, and it's coming from spotify apple music google music and all the other uh choices we have a lot of choices there's also deezer and title for high quality music there's amazon unlimited hd for high quality music i have one that maybe nobody's ever heard of but if you like one of the things i didn't like about all the other services is they seem to have a scant supply of classical music right. you like classical music mm -hmm. and uh and i was looking for a service that was primarily classical music and i found one it's called prime phonic and is that all one word yeah Prime Phonic, and they have an amazing selection of classical music. They also have podcasts about classical music, which is great if Ooh, you're if you're interested neat. in learning more. And they have two choices for ninety nine dollars a year or ten dollars a month. They have the three hundred twenty kilobit MP three stream, mm -hmm. which for most people, if you're you know unless you're uh, an audio enthusiast, is going to be just fine. For a little bit more money. Um, I think it was fifteen dollars a month, or I can't remember one hundred eighty bucks a year, a little bit more, maybe, uh, maybe not quite so much. You can get the high res version. So this is all. Um, sorry, I'm loving the moods. Moods. That's you want great. to study up? So one of the things I I like uh, about listening to classical music, it's great for productivity, right? So this is the study up playlist, which lets you focus, but keeps you engaged, relaxed. I'm ready and your brain play. pumping. See, it's, I always think Baroque music is really good for studying, for working, for oh, thinking. Oh, God, I love it. So I really like this service. Uh, unfortunately, it's a new service. I don't know, even know if you can get it on your Amazon studio. That's the problem is you're probably going to be stuck with, when you, when you go with one of these, Apple Music on the HomePod or Amazon's right. Music Unlimited HD on the studio. Uh, these do work. Prime Phonic is available on the Sonos, so that's a good oh. reason, good argument for that. The other thing that's uh, becoming more and more the case, and I think might be the best way to go for somebody who's really an audiophile, is you're starting to see AV units, AV receivers, that have built-in streaming music capabilities. Mm -hmm. And some do support Prime Phonic. I'm sure more will over time. So before you buy an AV receiver, that way you can hook it up to really good speakers. You can really get a great sound out of it or listen to it on high-quality headphones. Uh, but if you're looking for a source of good classical music and you're not satisfied with what Apple Music or Google's YouTube Music provides... Prime Phonic is uh, is a really great solution. I, I'm very happy from. Oh, is it German? I think probably it's... because the best stuff is made in Germany. Yeah, because I am on the Zindesk uh, und it is in German. Yeah. Uh, well, a lot of the, a lot of these recordings are from Deutsche Grammophon, and they have, by the way, all the classics. The very famous uh, Beethoven's Fifth and Seventh from the Wiener Philharmonica in Vienna. Ah. Uh, that's a Deutsche Grammophon. So they have they have uh, a whole iconic albums collection. They have playlists by country. Are you interested in Chinese classical music? Always. Oh, of course. Who wouldn't be? Don't you love Ooh, the Jasmine prelude Flower. to the song of the Yellow River Boatman? That one as well. I one like. of my favorites, the Butterfly Lovers. So they have by country. They have by instrument. Oh, that's choral neat. music. I love it. <gasps> Wait, do they have a harpsichord? Do they have harpsichord? Of course they do. You know, what I want to know is if they have theremin. <laughs> of course they have harpsichord. It's probably the very, well, here, bassoon, horn, prepared pianos, kind of like a harpsichord. Maybe that's what they mean by prepared piano. Yeah, I think that's the rinky-tink sound you like. So let's listen to some prepared piano. The alteration of original by objects like metal, screws, pieces of rubber, paper, and plastic. Wow. Oh, I've never heard You of wouldn't think there'd be a whole playlist <laughs> yeah, devoted to uh, pieces of plastic in my uh, piano. Now I have to learn about the history of prepared piano. I don't, you know, it's odd. I don't see harpsichord, although clearly that's an important part. I mean, if they've you got love, handled. You love harpsichord, huh? Handled and they've got, yeah, handled. I love. I've always wanted to learn how to play the harpsichord. It's just like a piano. Well, 
It's yeah. got that ting, ting, ting. But it's got that tinky sound. Yeah, yeah. I like that tinky. I love choral music. Makes and what I particularly dancing. love, and this is why I have kind of an odd taste in classical. I particularly love the earliest classical music by Josquin Dupre. There is very little of that on the mainstream music oh, services. Gotcha. But it is so, available there. Of course they have Josquin. So uh, that, that makes a big difference if you're looking for uh, a particular uh, performer. There are rules for prepared piano. I love this. Oh, yeah. You can't fake it. They've got to be applied directly yeah. to the piano strings. But since fit. you like harpsichord, you might like two lutes with grace. It's a plectrum lute, which means it's plucky. Plucky. Let's hear a little. Yep. That's almost harpsichord, isn't it? It is harpsichord. -y. See, I love this in the background. Lisa says you're playing your church music again, aren't you? <laughs> It's a little, it's a little um, fast for what I'm used to with harpsichord. Well, uh, also a lot of the original Josquin has very simple uh, choral melodies. This is well before uh, you know the more sophisticated Baroque and classical periods. Um, so it's somewhat medieval. I, I was a big Gregorian chants fan for a while, but I find this even more. Uh, soothing somehow. And I think it's more accessible. I think Mizzy and Henry would love a little Josquin to pray. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't get that on Amazon Music. No. Amazon. Well, you might. Yeah, Actually, Amazon. Looked. Of all of them, Amazon has the most classical music because they sell it. Ah. Uh, so they're trying to, you know, they're trying to get you to uh, to buy it. I like medieval music. I like uh, early classical. And that's the nice thing about having something like Pryphonic. You have some real choices. Cool. What do you? What's your number? I bet it's Spotify. You look like a Spotify guy. I use both Apple Music and Spotify. So and that's I have, my problem. I have all of them. I have a reason. You know, I've got a a, a, a sort of thing in place. <laughs> Spotify is my go-to DJ. Um, right. Spotify can recommend music for me on the fly that I genuinely enjoy. One of my favorite features of Spotify, and it's a toggle within the app, you can tell it that when it gets to the end of a playlist that you've selected, continue to play music that it thinks is based off of that playlist. So you can listen to a never ending stream of music and I love it. And it's, it's genuinely been very good at choosing music that I actually do enjoy. Apple Music's recommendations often let me down. I think that in the long run, the libraries are almost identical for yes. all of these, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to come down to the curation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you, I think you're not alone. I think most people agree. Spotify with the Discover pl Weekly playlist and the things they do really has the best curation. It does. And so that's where I do my, if I'm wanting to listen to just whatever, if I want to go in the car and have a long stream of music, that's what I do. But my music library, the music I've purchased and the albums that I've downloaded as a uh, Apple Music subscriber, those are all in Apple Music. I mostly, when I mostly listen to music, it's by album. So I listen through whatever album I'm listening to. So if I want to listen to random music that I know I'll like, I go to Spotify. If I'm looking to just listen to an album, then I go to Apple Music for that. Do you notice any difference in quality? No, but I'm not good at that. Yeah. Um, not I, if you're listening to these speakers. <laughs> right, right, exactly. I, I don't... And see, the thing is, I've listened to some high-quality stuff, and the only thing that sounds different is I can hear more scratches. <laughs> I just spit everywhere, but uh, scratches in things. Um, it doesn't really sound all that yeah. different to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I suppose there is a difference, and of course there's companies like Tidal that offer... Uh, uncompressed music mm -hmm. uh, for a premium price. That's why I subscribed to Amazon HD Unlimited because that's what they promised. They said, they call it HD, but what it really is is, is higher recording bitrate music. Um, you probably know this, but I'm just going to run through it very quickly. Uh, CDs are, because they're digital, they have to be sampled. They have to slice the, the sound waves. You know, sound waves are continuous. But in order to make them digital, they, our voices are being digitized, right? We are speaking in an analog form into a microphone that is designed to take them as sound waves. But that microphone then just goes right down the pipe into a digitizer, mm -hmm. which turns it into bits. And the way you do that is by sampling it, just slicing it. And uh, the number of times per second you slice it and the resolution of the measurements you make is what determines how much information is captured. The more you, the speedier, you know, so there's, so that's two numbers. One is the sample rate. Mm -hmm. And a CD, for instance, is 44,100 samples per second. But you probably have seen uh, other 
forms of music that are a lower sample rate. And then, it, so you're, you're slicing the music up 44,100 times a second, but then you have to measure what that slice, the amplitude of that slice. And you can do it using a 16-bit number, which will give you 65,000 different choices. Okay. But if you use a, for instance, 24-bit number, It'll give you, I think, four billion choices. <laughs> so you have a finer resolution. So the fast, the more, the faster the sample rate, and the higher the resolution of each sample. In theory, you're gathering more information. Now, there's a point of diminishing returns where you gather too much information, and you can actually add uh, artifacts and harmonics that make the music sound worse. Oh wow! So it's generally agreed, honestly, that for most people, 44.1 by 16 bits, mm -hmm. which is what CD quality is, is enough. And so Amazon's HD is in most cases CD quality. Oh, okay. They don't further compress it. They don't turn it into an MP3. That takes bits of the music out to make it smaller and is not as good, uh, although most people are used to MP3s or Apple's AAC format, mm -hmm. also a lossy format where bits are taken out and frankly can't tell the difference. But if, if, if you sit down in a high quality a uh, uh, room where you could do an A-B comparison. You might be able to tell the difference, especially if you're told what to look for. So CD quality is uncompressed. It's it's the f it's it's all the samples and all the bits. And then, of course, when a recording artist goes into a studio, these days they almost always record digitally. Mm -hmm. They're going to record it uh, at a higher sample rate in many cases and almost certainly with a higher bit Right. Okay. So uh, I asked uh, Joe Walsh of the Eagles. I said, w when you record, he has a home studio. When you record, what do you use? He says, well, I don't, f the, the file size gets too big if I sample it at more than 44.1, the CD sample size. That's sufficient, but he does it at 24 bit instead okay. of 16 bit. And it's his opinion, and he's a musician, that that's more than adequate. Uh, when they remixed uh, uh, some of the Beatles masters, they did the same thing. They kept the sample rate. Uh, you know, they're digitizing analog tapes. They kept the sample rate as they digitized it, but they incre increased the bit rate uh, to 24-bit. Uh, a lot of the Amazon HD music, they'll have little indicators. You're playing it. Almost all of it's CD quality, but occasionally they'll have a hot, what this is what we call high-res music, which is recorded either at a higher sample rate, sometimes as much as 96,000 bits per second or uh, samples like per overkill. second at yeah 96k 24 bit that's pretty high um <laughs> that's awfully high so uh sometimes that's just upsampled from lower quality music if you're listening to miles davis kind of blue which was recorded on a reel to reel <laughs> tape uh you're not getting anywhere near that kind of quality right. you're oversampling it there's no point in fact you're probably adding artifacts that are going to make it sound worse um so cd quality is more than adequate but if you're listening to something modern that was recorded on digital equipment at a higher resolution why not listen to it at the resolution the artists recorded it at right yeah i, I don't agree. know if i could hear the difference i will I know say I can't. when i've listened to uh high high res versions of and yes i'm going to say beyonce there's because beyonce does some acapella songs where she's very close to the microphone and it's almost just like her and the piano and you can hear the movement of the mouth yeah i quite like that i think that's a very cool experience and you don't hear that if get. it's an mp3 or right. an ac but you do hear do that you hear it on yeah. the high res yeah so that it's you know there are reasons to listen to it some people say it's more emotional mm -hmm. that i can't tell you what the audio difference is but i feel the music more and i think that's true with symphonic music more than any other kind it's one of the reasons john buys tickets to see the symphony in person he wants nothing in between him and the sound of the instruments and i think that's wonderful if you can do that but most of our lives we're hearing recorded music i in my opinion and i'm not alone in this a lot of experts agree cd quality sound is more than adequate and any much more than that you're either oversampling or perhaps even adding uh, uh, artifacts to the sound that actually degrades it a little bit but I do think when you're listening to streaming music, if you have enough bandwidth, it's nice to at least hear CD quality. So I yeah. do subscribe to Amazon HD. As high as you can yeah. get. And Primephonic, I subscribe to their uh, high-res stuff as well. Now, this is 
But again, curation for most people is all that really matters. Right. Right. They're Playlists. listening on the little ear pods that came with their phone <laughs> right. or whatever. And there's nothing, you know, I'm not saying that as, oh, wow, well, you're listening. That's fine. For a long uh, time, so I liked uh, Google Play Music because it had good curation. They bought a company that actually did some really interesting playlists and things like that. But Google's shutting this down. Oh, really? Yeah. They want everybody to move to YouTube Music. And uh, if you have a subscription to Google Play Music, it'll be converted to YouTube Music at some point. And you see it's it's actually fairly similar. Um, they are adding some interesting new mixes. This is the Discover Mix, which will update on Wednesdays. They didn't want to do Tuesdays. Spotify's already got Tuesday. I love that everywhere we go, Lizzo is there. Leo well, that's me. Lizzo, yeah. That's me because I'm a Lizzo fan. So you can see I, they, they gave me a lot of Lizzo. In fact, they have a Your Mix which is based on the music I own. I have uploaded all my music to Google Music. Mm -hmm. So they have a pretty good, I think, pretty good idea of what I like. Let me just see what my mix would would have in it. It's got Dust on the Bottle by uh, David Lee Murphy. No idea who that is. <laughs> Boot Scootin' Boogie by Brooks and Dunn. Not my favorite. Let me pause this. Um, Kid Rock Wait, and Sheryl Crow. Rock. No. Uh, I could still make Cheyenne by George Strait. Apparently, it thinks I'm a country fan. Yeah. Living on Love by Alan Jackson. Reba McIntyre, the Charlie Daniels band. This what the accurate. hell? <laughs> Something happened. No, this. But this is my complaint. To be honest, this is my complaint uh, about uh, YouTube Music. It's like a robot that's somewhat broken <laughs> is making it. So I have made playlists asking for songs. Remember, I was. Really oh, into yeah. the um, redneck, uh, what was that redneck uh, song, uh, Cotton Joe? Jo Cotton Eye Joe. Cotton Eye Joe. So, <laughs> so I made a Cotton Eye Joe playlist that was the... <laughs> that was horrible. That <laughs> weirdest, was... weirdest list of things. But in a way, I kind of enjoy this because, uh, to be honest, um, it's kind of fun. The playlists sure, are bizarre. <laughs> sometimes um but there but i do hear stuff i don't normally hear so let me see if i can uh, let's see if i can uh, show you what happened when i well let's search for otto ebner so that's a that's another weird one okay actually i was going to do rednecks and uh cotton eye joe there's cotton eye joe maybe that's why so <laughs> that is a uh, a genre of music that is, I think, redneck EDM. I'm not sure what it is. Yeah. But redneck EDM. I don't know what it is. But as a result, look at the playlist that I got from this. We like to party by the Venga Bus, Barbie Girl by Aqua, Los Del Rios Macarena, Lou Bega Mana, Mambo Number no. Five, <laughs> uh, Backstreet hey, Boys, Mambo. Everybody, Backstreet's Back, Ico Ico, but not by my favorite dr john but by somebody named captain jack hmm. right said fred remember them but well you probably remember their big hit but that's not this you're my mate <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm blue daba d daba die i mean just to push it but you know what okay funky town what a strange mix this is and yet i kind of liked it it is it is interesting it was just weird yeah right so Fun it's music. like a weird robot made this, but a weird robot that you might kind of like. Like, <laughs> you know, it's, at it's first like you a, go, "You're strange," but I like you. A quirky eccentric uncle or something. Yeah, I mean, uh, "Ein zwei Polizei" by Ma Du. Now I like it. <laughs> I never awesome. heard of it. Was How did the das? robot know? <laughs> Was ist das? Was ist das is the name of the album. Eins, zwei, Polizei. There you go. There's your pick of the week. Uh, he even looks kind of strangely emo and yes. creepy. Kind of great. Uh, I just, I, so this is my problem. And yet, at the same time, I'm oddly bemused by this. I don't know why it's decided I like country music. Maybe I played Cotton Eye Joe just once too many One times. Too many times. Google knows all my music. I've uploaded all my music to Google. Um, I'm not sure if that shows up here. Fine, the other thing, it because it's YouTube, you get all the videos if you want. I kind of like how you said that, like YouTube. YouTube. But... Isn't that how you young say it? YouTube. Maybe. Because it's YouTube. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, there's your BTS, your favorite BTS. Oh, I love BTS, man. So you can also have videos. 
Mm. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. So, um, by the way, and once you pick time. BTS, there's no going stand back. back. This playlist is going to get weird. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to go on forever. And well, there, yeah, that's the other thing. You do have, uh, and I think actually this is a lot of fun. I, I don't know about you. I think one of the things I think happens, our podcasts are pretty darn long. And I finally figured out people don't care how long they are as long as they don't end. So right. I like the endless mix. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. It, you never have to look down at your phone and pick something else. Because it's just going to keep playing music. Unfortunately, that's why I like Spotify. What Spotify does, yeah, their endless just playlists. keeps. I like endless playlists. So, um, I don't like country endless Ein playlists. Zwei Polizei. I do like Ein Zwei Polizei. Polizei. So that's YouTube Music, the soon to be replacement for Google Play Music. Excellent. Do you want to show anything else? You no. see, I still have Spotify. We were talking about Amazon's uh, unlimited music HD. Um, it has. It does have a lot of uh, classic music. I have unused. I have, should I send you an invite to my family plan? Uh, I'm good. Nah, thank you. You're good. You're good. I'm good. I'm not a hip. I'm not a hipster. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to hear Girl Squad. I'm not into our. You know the new Black or James Taylor hand picked. Where'd that come from? Oh, he's got a new album. Did you know that? I was gonna say that actually would sounds good to me. You like some James Taylor? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Ella. She's yeah. an ultra. They kind of they kind of know, but the, the, this is kind of silly because Ultra HD with something that was recorded on a reel to reel. That's true. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna get, but <laughs> yeah. But on the other hand, if you hear uh, Ultra HD Lady Gaga, now you know you're gonna get. I can't play any of this. Music. Right, it'll just it's get us in just trouble. Immediately get us taken down. Yeah, this is a new James Taylor album. So here's Ultra HD albums. Oh, Miles Davis. Yeah, again. Yeah, I know. When you see Not anything that was recorded before 1995, it was recorded on tape. Listen, I just like to believe that when I'm listening to Frankie, that it is... it is. He's going to Hollywood, baby. It's beautiful, and it's new, and it's yep. fresh. And Are you mean Sinatra or Frankie goes to Hollywood? Oh, sorry. No, I mean Sinatra. <laughs> Frankie. Old blue eyes. Old blue eyes. You are an old soul. <laughs> it just blows me away. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. <sighs> Who knows? So there's uh, a lot about music. That was a lot about music. But, you know... There's a lot to learn and love. It's one of the main things we do, isn't it? Is some, music. You know, there's some people who don't like music. They don't listen to music. They can't do music. Who are you people? I, I, I don't get it. It's fine. Um, that, well, it's I will fine, say but... this. I'm not a fan of, and you, this Vegas is the worst practitioner, of constant wallpaper music everywhere you go. Yeah. Uh, I don't care what the music is. It's wallpaper. Mm -hmm. It's not, you're not listening to and it. You're music. not enjoying it. It's just playing in the background. You know, it's elevator music, but, you know, nowadays it's more modern, better music. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by the Green Fox, Ryan Reynolds. Oh! Oh, man, what's, up, Ryan? what's up, Brian? So, uh, there he is. Oh, Dang, he's, he's so cute. minty. He's so minty fresh. Um, I hear that when you kiss Brian Reynolds. It's a blast of mint. A blast of mint. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think that's why he called it Mint Mobile? Because he wants to be mini fresh? I don't know. I thought it was called Mint Mobile before he bought it. The though. cool thing about Mint Mobile is you're getting service from T-Mobile. If you like your T-Mobile service, you're paying too much because Mint Mobile's T-Mobile service at a lot less. They don't have the stores. They don't have any physical presence. They just resell T-Mobile at an amazing price. Why pay more? For the same service. Mint Mobile can cut your bill down to $15 a month for the same coverage. <laughs> I, you, I know you're thinking, well, that's not. Yes, it is possible. In fact, I, you and I both use it and we love it. Yep. Um, so here's the deal. Here's the deal. Uh, with Mint Mobile, you get unlimited nationwide talk, unlimited text, crazy fast 4G LTE, and you pick the plan. You say, well, in fact, all you got to do is look at your bill, see how much data you use, and then you pick the plan. Now, $15 a month is their three-month introductory plan, and they'll ship you the SIM. You could put it in your existing phone. That gives you three gigs a month. I thought, well, in for a penny, in for a pound. I'm going all the way because it's the best deal I ever heard of. I bought a one-year plan, $300, paid the year up, up front, that's uh, twenty five dollars a month, if my math is correct, and I get 
12 gigabytes of data a month. I never a use month, it. A month. A month. Wow. I never use it. That's so much. My entire phone plan is $25 a month. What do you pay? On T-Mobile, I pay 70 bucks. On Verizon, I pay 90 On bucks. On AT&T, it's ridiculous. <laughs> $25 a month. That's really incredible. So that's what I went for. But you you should try the three-month interactive plan. Make sure it's what you want. You can buy phones from them, but I would just suggest taking, if you have an unlocked phone, they have a little uh, IEMI checker. You can give them the IMEI for your phone, that little serial number, and they can say if your phone's compatible. If it is, they send you the SIM for free, no charge for the SIM. Plug it in. You can even port your number over. Of course you can, which means that you'll be using the same number, the same texts. It'll all be there. And if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee. Keep your phone number. Keep your contacts. Keep your phone. But pay a lot less. It is brilliant. Try the $15 a month for three months introductory plan. And then uh, if you like it, uh, take a look. Look how much data you use. Get the plan that's right for you. I get a ton of data for 25 bucks a month. It's unbelievable. You know, they all, everybody else lies when they say unlimited data, right? Yes, so this way, you no, know, I got 12 gigabytes. No true And you, you can get more and you pay by the gigabyte. But I, who's using more than 12? That's a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. That's a lot of data, not me. Go to mintmobile.com slash iOS. That's the key. And by the way, notice that slash iOS, that's how they know. Specifically that you, you saw it here. Show. So yeah. please do that for us. Uh, mintmobile.com slash iOS. And you can cut your wireless bill down to $15. $15. No extras. That's it. No hidden fees. No magic numbers. It's just $15. That's their three-month introductory plan. Mintmobile.com slash iOS. Please use that URL. Please. 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 Time for news. News. What's in the news? Well, up first we've got Mario Kart Tour. Uh, so <laughs> That's Mar not news. That's been out for a while. Oh, but there is news, Ooh. Leo. Mario Kart Tour is getting multiplayer mode Ooh. in iOS. Oh. It's coming on March 8th. That was something missing. Because we're all used to playing Mario Kart with our buddies, right? Yeah. That's what made it fun. Yeah. So, it's still a really good game, but wow. You nice. can play online with friends or you can play with others nearby. You choose the rule. I've never played Mario Kart Tour, so you have a little bit more insider it's information. Just a, it's like Mario Kart, but you have all these different tracks you can race on, go around the world, that kind of thing. Okay. Collect points. But it's very similar. You can still throw bananas. You know, all that stuff. Gotcha. Now, Except that they're all, non, they're all uh, non-player entities. But now it'll be other people. Now it'll be actual other yeah. people. Do you have a gold pass? No. I just... <laughs> I'm cheap. I just played it free. I don't think anyone would ever describe Leo Laporte as cheap. Cheap when it comes to Mario Kart. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, so the gold pass is four ninety nine dollars per month. That's not bad, but and you'd have to really be all in on Mario Kart. You'd have to Mario really Kart. want to play Mario yeah. Kart. I was happy. You get like four worlds at, you know, for free. That's enough. So you can compete up to against. I don't up know to if I'll seven. be able to compete with it though, right? You can compete for free. Can um, you? Yeah, the thing that you get with having gold passes are called gold races. So right. only MKT Gold Pass subscribers compete with the best of the best for the highest grade. Four sets of rules that change daily. Ooh. So you can raise your grade, I guess, by doing that. Why is it? Why is it this way? Why not? I hate when they do that. I know. It's sideways. Um, it's downloading the data pack. Oh, gotcha. I haven't played it in a while. Gotcha. Um, it maybe, yeah, it's because... Um, March 8th, is that a Monday? They, I, I, you know, it does bug me when developers do that. Sunday. But maybe they figure most people with iPads don't have the keyboards or something. I don't know. Oh. Don't yeah, know. so it comes out on uh, Sunday, March 8th. Let's see what Mario Kart Tour looks like these days. Can you yeah. play it with a controller? Yes. Oh, that's nice. Yes. That's Although, nice. I, you know, on the iPad anyway, it's a big enough surface that using the on-screen controls isn't too bad. That's true. I guess I would I, want there it. There was something weird with Mario Kart when I first got it because I couldn't lose. Oh, that's right. I remember you remember saying that? that. Yeah. You're like, I think they did this on purpose. So. Like, they want me to give them money so I can continue <laughs> to not lose. <laughs> Get real people in it. It's gonna, I'm going to start place. losing. Wow, is it slow? It, uh, How many loading screens does it have? That's the third. Some little kid's going to be that's really upset. Oh, oh it's Mario! Mario. Hey, uh -oh. Let's plug in the sound so you can hear it. Mario time! Um, now open. How does Luigi sound? Luigi! Ah. There you go. Get in there. Oh, I guess it forgot it. Oh, you know what? I played it on my phone. That's why. Oh, right. 
I forgot everything that I had. Don't had worry, done. you got some new login bonuses. <laughs> This is the thing I don't like about these kinds of games. Is they're all of it's these a, bonus screens. It's a loot box game. That's Toad. Hey, okay. Toad boy. Let's go, Chief Twit. And now all of these fake people are entering the race. But watch. I'm terrible at this game. Oh, Goombas. See, I didn't grow up with Mario like you did. I didn't grow up at all. <laughs> I want to be a Toys R Us kid. Oh, you use... Oh, I... Okay. As I said, I've only played this on the iPhone, so this is going to be... Whoa! <laughs> I'm drifting, man. Oh, banana peel. Oh, I want to get over there. Come on. Come on. Oh, so you do use your fingers, You could use your fingers, too. Oh, so both work? I should have probably used my fingers. I'm a better driver with my fingers. Same. When I don't put my hands on the wheel, I'm not a great driver. See, I'm still in first place, even though I'm not doing anything. Yeah, how well. are you in first? Yeah, exactly. You didn't even do the. Um, I didn't speed even do the ramp. The I know. Yeah. Because they're all so slow in the background. Maybe you have like easy mode. Oh, no, I didn't get any. I didn't get any coins either. No, I really think it's they just want you to play. But I think with real people in it, it's going to be much more fun. Ouch. Ooh. And still in How first. How are they not passing you? I'm still in first. Ah. I'm going to hit the turd, the giant turd, and I'm still going to be in this first. This makes no sense. Yeah, so it's not. This is not real. Well, I honestly enjoy it. <laughs> Why shouldn't I always be in first? Oh, son of a gun. I'm now... But see, I'm still in first. Yeah, see, in, in, in the, on the Nintendo... I won! That makes no sense. <laughs> I... One. Okay, it's a good game. First. I think it's a good game. You, you're, you're googling why Leo can't lose. Yeah, I need to know why. Because I'm a good person. I'm the only one playing, but I'm not. But they're all uh, they're all, you know, computer characters who don't drive well. I guess. <laughs> He's googling this to find out why I can't lose. I just want to know. If I'm the only one. They know it's me. Other people do that too. No, I'm really good. Ma I'm the Mario and Dreddy of Mario Kart. <gasps> That's the scariest shell. Wait, it doesn't have wings. Yeah, it didn't have wings in the, in the past. Back in the day. Oh, back in the day. This is the back in the my day time. thing. Gotcha. Now it has wings, like red. I think. Is it, there any other news? Ball. Surely there's something there else. Is, I. Look, you're the one who pulled out the game and started playing. Uh, Apple has announced it had a, a competition <laughs> that uh, for for night mode photos, and uh, it shows, oh, they're beautiful. Mm -hmm, it Did shows you see the, the ice best. truck ice truck one? There it is. <gasps> Love that! Wow! Wow! So blue with a phone. Well, and that's by the way. Yeah, that's one thing for photographers say. Well, that's the problem is the white balance is is bad because it's you know blue. But anyway, go ahead. It's still a pretty picture. This one's pretty gorgeous. I can't Why see the Why did that win an award? Oh, I think that's neat. It's a picture of somebody's backyard. But look at the lot. It's so geometric. You like it? Yeah. <clears throat> it doesn't speak to me. Does this one speak to you? No, it's, it's a tree. I don't like this one. Okay, you know what, Apple? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Apple. Listen, Apple. Oh, oh, that's really cool. Wait, what's going on back there? Wow. Oh, it's fake. It's just cutouts. Oh, that's kind of disappointing. Oh, that's cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one's neat. Oh, that's Greenland. <clears throat> that's pretty. That's very cool. That looks like Greenland anyway. Or maybe Let's it's see. Norway. It says Russia. Russia. It's Moscow. That's Moscow? No, you're looking at... That's the one... Mm -mm. This really? One, the that's line, Moscow? This is Moscow. Russia. Right. Yeah. Okay. Winter Village by the Sea. Oh, Winter Village by the Sea. <laughs> In what is that? Rustum, Rustum. Sh I don't care. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there it is, steaming hot pot. This reminds me of Parasite. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Is it South Korea? Um, Beijing. Beijing. I don't really like that one either. Yeah, but you know, Apple's more interested in the technical merit of the fact that they could take these in such low light. That's what they're trying True. to show off as night mode. But I don't think I agree with you. I don't think they're quite as good as the pictures that they take. They've day. seen in Except the other shot one. with iPhone. That's a that's pretty. I would make this one a wallpaper or something that's like pretty. that. I, th I think you should have done more street. I want more street. That's ugly. <laughs> what so, the hell? It's a red sorry tree. To Mitsun. Maybe they didn't get a lot of uh, entries. I don't know. 
<laughs> they got five. It says, this one blows my mind. I have no idea where the deep, rich red uh, light is coming from on the tree. It almost feels like a UFO sitting above the tree just out of frame. Okay. I don't. I don't get it. You got a rich imagination. I do like that. That one's movie. not so bad. That looks like Parasite Elsa. Yeah. Yeah. I think they just did a good job it's capturing close the lines, lines in perfectly. A, uh, back alley. Yeah. And then that one is good. But that's that's the one I saw, and I liked that. I thought that was pretty good. You can see there's no driver, so obviously he was driving the thing, jumped out, took ran in front of it, took a picture, jumped back in. Ooh, said, I wonder how cold. That's a winner. Oh, that's also in Moscow. Yeah. It gets cold there Constantine. in the winter right here. All right. That's okay. that one. Uh, I wanted to talk about this because this is something that I recently set up, uh, Amazon's Eero. So Amazon purchased Eero, uh, and so they've been a sponsor. Are they, they're, uh, they're a sponsor, sponsor on network. Yeah. Yeah. We love um, them. I have had Eero routers since before I joined Twit. Love my Eero setup. Mm -hmm. I've got the, the Eero Pro and then the two beacons and, uh, Eero had announced that they were going to be providing HomeKit support for their routers. And then they were purchased by Amazon, and I was a little concerned that that meant that they weren't going to offer like maybe it Maybe they'd be soon. doing an Echo thing, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, that is not the case. They have rolled out an update even before Linksys, which was the other. The Linksys Velop mesh router system is the other one that's announced that they'll add HomeKit support. Uh, I'm pleased that Eero added it and it's available. I set it up. It's very easy to do, which is rare. Uh, I recommend using the Eero app to do so. So I'm in the Eero app and it says your Eero now works with Apple HomeKit. Mm -hmm. So I just tap that and uh, set it up? Yeah, you tap that and you go through the process. And I'll then, do it at home, obviously. Yeah, definitely. I was yeah. going to say, I recommend you do it at home. <laughs> uh, so what it does is it essentially creates a network within a network to sort of firewall off your HomeKit enabled accessories oh. so that they can exist on the same network, but they're not going to be harming other That's things on the fantastic. network. That's fantastic. Normally, you know, Steve always is talking about the three router solution and it's all these complicated things to isolate your IoT network from your real network. And of course, the minute you do that, you can't control any of your right. IoT devices anymore. Yeah. So it's kind of hardly worth it. This solves that problem. You can still control them, I presume. Yes. And then but on, they're isolated. And then on top of that, there's this great feature where That's so great. per device you go through and there are three modes uh, for security. There's restrict to home, there's automatic, and there's no restriction. And so I'll kind of talk really quickly about what each of them do. Automatic is the default security setting that's in place. And what this does is it allows those accessories to communicate on your local HomeKit network, which right. is a local area network, right. and send connections to the internet only from approved connections that the manufacturer sets. So essentially, it's a firewall that blocks all except the approved Yes, connections. That's could, really good. Which is which is fantastic. You can change it to no restriction if you want to. If you no. have some sort of third party thing you're trying to connect it with, but then there's the the most secure, which is called restrict to home. And I think this is great. This makes it so that the only thing the device can do is communicate on your local area network. That's completely really completely blocks it off from yeah. any access. Now, a lot of these devices will connect to the internet internet for uh, time syncing and things like that. So it can cause issues potentially. Potentially. Of course, that's where you get your firmware updates and things like that but as well. But you control it all with the home app. Yeah, so you can turn app, it on and so off So you can you say, hmm, I need more uh, access because I need to set the time or right. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So that's great. very cool. Like I said, a very simple setup. And then uh, some folks had trouble finding where to go in the home app after it's done. So I'll quickly show that. Uh, you just launch the home app. You tap in the top left corner. Make sure you're on the home tab. You tap in the top left corner on home. And then you scroll down until you see Wi-Fi networks and routers. You tap on that, and it shows you the routers and the extenders that are being used in the system, and then each of the accessory packages that you have set up. And that is where you can choose, do I want to restrict to home? Do I want to choose automatic or no restrictions? That's awesome. Yeah. And it's what's cool, too, is it'll even show you what different connections have been taking place and what each of them are doing. Uh, Can I just show you one thing that makes me sad every time I do this? So here's my home network, and I see my internet speed. It's not horrible. 94 megabits down, 12 megabits up, right? Then I switch over to my mom's network because she has, I set her up with Eero too. And I take a look at her internet speeds. 600 megabits down, 369 she, up. How does she have 369 up? She got fiber. I was going to brag so about mine. sad. I've so got, sad. I've got 599 down, but I've only got 18 up. Yeah. She called me and she said, oh, the Verizon guy was just here. I said, oh, that's nice. 
let me look at your uh, bandwidth. And I had the old, the last bandwidth test. It was 30 and one or something. It was terrible. I did this and I said, oh, <laughs> congratulations, mom. <laughs> you have the fastest internet I've ever seen. That's so unfair. Yeah, so unfair. Anyway, it's fun because yeah. I can see her network and uh, she can't see mine. Mwah. Mwah. So there's that. Um, and then you... Me dropped a story in the th the, the your links about Project Lightspeed. Do you use Facebook Messenger? No, oh, in fact, I, I after so Facebook has announced that they're they completely rewrote the Messenger. It's gone from some whopping like three hundred megabytes Horrible. to they, they've shrunk it in size. They've sped it up. It's seventy five percent smaller and fifty percent faster. So I downloaded it, and the first thing it says is log into Facebook. Uh-oh. <laughs> so I can't use it. Do you use it? I have it. I don't use it. Yeah. I had to get it recently, but I don't use I, it. I, I, truth is, it's a great messenger. I love it. It has uh, it has built-in uh, oh, whisper creep. protocol, which is the signal protocol. So except for Facebook, nobody can read your stuff. I just, I don't have any Facebook stuff on my phone, including Instagram uh, messenger or Facebook itself. I don't have a Facebook account. I killed it over a year ago. Uh, I don't miss it. Um, but I think Facebook Messenger, if you are using Facebook, is an excellent messenger program. Yeah. And, you know, there is a rumor floating around mm -hmm. that Apple may, maybe even as soon as iOS 13, or I mean 14, what is the next one? 14, mm -hmm. right? They may allow you to switch the default oh, apps, yeah. apps. And if they allow you to say, well, I don't want to use messages, I want to use Messenger. That might be a good thing. Messenger works on Android. It would work with everybody if if your friends are all using Messenger. Yeah, if you have everybody on there. Uh, unfortunately, Messenger is the way that creeps reach out to me more than anywhere else. <laughs> well, yeah, it's everybody uses I, it. I don't. Yeah, I, I don't really ever go in there. Do you have a really sexy picture? Oh, I'm just <laughs> smoldering. Lisa says the same thing about uh, words with friends. I said, "What people are people are hitting on you with words of friends and then i looked at her picture i said well of course they are <laughs> i would hit on you <laughs> you should have a picture of a you know a, a pineapple right. instead that's my then no one will hit on you unless they really like pineapple that's my technique yeah yeah because then you get all the pineapple freaks uh no kink shaming so there was broccoli maybe you've got a broccoli pineapple's thing. a little prickly i don't know i wouldn't you know oh never mind wouldn't was, hug a pineapple i was about to go into this whole trivia about pineapple there's a lot to know there's about enzymes pineapple. in there that It'll eat your flesh. Yes, but on top of that, it also has little, <laughs> little bits of uh, calcium carbonate. It's but they're, a pretty hostile. Uh, they're in fruit. a specific structure yeah. that actually causes little micro slits in your flesh it's as a well. Pretty hostile fruit. It does not want you eating it. Yeah. But I love it. It's I so love good. pineapple so much. So good. That's why I make sure to bake mine at 450 degrees <laughs> for half an hour until it screams. Until it screams. <laughs> It really I does. Do. I love eat. pineapple. Me too. And there's so much vitamin C in pineapple. Ugh, yum. Yum. Anyway, it wants to eat us <laughs> instead of us eating it. It is. It's the most hostile fruit. Yep. Uh, there's another. I think it's rhubarb that has those little calcium like rhubarb too crystals in it. I like. Have you ever had strawberry? Oh, of course you've had strawberry. Strawberry rhubarb pie. pie is my favorite I make, pie. No way. I make an excellent gluten-free <laughs> strawberry rhubarb pie. I'll have to make it sometime. Gluten-free. He says yes. Yes. Do you use buckwheat flour? No, I use a. Actually, Bob's Red Mill makes the best uh, flour. pie. It's got almond in it and stuff. Yeah, yeah they make yeah. a pie a specific to pie crust. Yeah, mix, I and love it's Bob's really Red good. Mill. Yeah, they're good. Uh, so iPhone. So the China says not. Wow, let me. <laughs> still thinking about strawberry rhubarb. Mmm. Mm. So pie. Coronavirus yes. was Ooh, obviously ruined my appetite. <laughs> causing an issue for production of gadgets. Yeah. Foxconn says next month, next end of the month, maybe. I think that's. Wait, is Han Hai? Han Hai is Foxconn. Oh. They uh, share a name. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's their real name, Han Hai Precision. <gasps> But we call them Foxconn. We do. For reasons no one knows. Uh, hmm. Foxconn says their factory workers will be back at the end of March. Now, didn't they say this before, though? Yeah, I think that's a little over-optimistic. We just don't know. For a while, coronavirus uh, incidents were going down, or at least not going up as fast. They've, got, they've started to tick up again in China. So uh, don't hold your breath. They do admit, or maybe do if you yeah, hold your it. breath. They do it as long as you can. They do admit that it is going to impact uh, 
the new the next iPhone, the yeah. iPhone whatever they're going to call it, uh, nine the four hundred dollar iPhone. Probably their new iPads on the on the slated too for the end of March. You know, the end of March is when we hear. Apple will have its event March 31st. Yeah, so. and maybe we would, we would even see air tags at that event. Yeah. But who knows now? Who knows? Will WWDC be canceled? Who knows? You know, it's they're not canceling South by Southwest, surprisingly. Interesting. Yeah, even though Facebook says we're not going, Twitter yeah. says we're not going. Yeah, did you see Twitter just sent out a message to its employees saying, no if you travel. can work from home, you work from yeah. home. Yeah, we'll be doing that soon. I actually had uh, Russell, our IT guy, uh, working on a strategy so that we can all do these shows from our home mm. wearing bunny suits. Uh, the only bad thing is Kevin has to come in. Oh, no. To yeah, you have switching? to push the buttons, yeah. So if he's the only one, though, yeah, then he's okay. Yeah, just be all by yourself, Kevin, in this beautiful studio. All the snacks, think of it. Yeah. All the snacks Remember are the yours. candy building? Yep. You have, I'll give you the key. <laughs> the key to the candy building. Key to the candy building. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's a that's a big deal. I was kind of wondering about that, too. Somebody's saying, because it's not just the interactive festival, there's a music festival and a film festival at South by Southwest. They they are loath to uh, shut down. I, I don't know. Um, just, I don't I know. I don't care if they're loath to shut down. I think you should make the choice that's right for... I guess they're hoping that individuals will make the choice that's right for them. Is that the... yeah. Yeah, maybe. But you, that you going to St. Louis? My issue, yeah, we're still going to St. Louis. My issue is your employees. So that's why we're looking at should it start to become a problem, we're looking at a plan so employees don't have to come to work because right. I, I think you owe it to your employees to allow them to choose safety, mm -hmm. right? Of course your attendees are gonna are gonna choose. Yeah. That's a really good point. Because we what was it? There was a report out recently, seventy percent of, of the workers who were surveyed said they went to work sick. Because they have to, because they, they don't to. get sick pay. Yeah. Which um, is atrocious. Yeah. Um yeah. yeah. I yeah, that's my when my mom was at the airport uh to leave she texts who's you know in in past security and everything like that and she texted me and she goes um and i said what and she said all of the employees here just put on goggles gloves and face masks and i said did they say anything and she said no <laughs> that, this will be interesting we're flying tomorrow mm -hmm. flying southwest to uh, st louis uh, we're going to do an event. In fact, if you're in St. Louis, uh, come on out to the Trainwreck Saloon tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. We're going to the uh, the one in the Portal area. Okay. And uh, there's two Trainwreck Saloons. And then if you're a WWT customer, it's uh, unfortunately limited to WW. There it is. The Westport, not Portal. Oh. Westport Trainwreck Saloon. I was going to say, I don't know what that was, but I know Westport. Do you? Yeah. Oh. It's a nice area. It is, yeah. Right. There's lots of uh, it's gonna be fun. lots of bars. We're not. There. It's no host. We're not buying you drinks or anything. But uh, Lisa and I will be there uh, tomorrow night, 7:30 p.m. onward. The next day, if you're a WWT customer, ask your rep so that you can come to our panel. Mary Jo Foley, Alex Lindsay, and I, and we'll be talking about the future of the cloud. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Now, is this available for people to see if they yes, can't go? We're making a show out of it, so you'll oh, be able to good. download it later. So you don't have to risk your health. <laughs> you can just watch the video. Of it, I'm risking my health so you don't have to. <laughs> you should have a shirt that says that. I'm not too. I'm not too worried. Yeah, you've uh, got a. It seems you got an immune system to. I'm gonna wash my hands a lot. Yeah, twit.tv/blog if you want to see the details. Cool. Yep. Uh, oh, this report uh, for let's see where was this from the Australian? Oh golly, Australia's. Strategic Policy Institute. This really made me sad. Uyghurs for sale. Um, the Muslim minority in China, which has been heavily persecuted, and in fact, millions put in concentration camps in China, and apparently they are being used as effectively slave labor in some Chinese factories, including factories that make some Chinese, uh, some Apple components, including the camera, the um, camera, uh, the iPhone, some of the parts in the iPhone 10. It's unknown if uh, any parts in the current iPhone 11 uh, are made by uh, weaker slave labor or forced labor. But uh, that is it, very disturbing news. Apple and is among 83 other major companies. It's suppliers. It. It's not in the Han Hai, in the Foxconn factories, because Apple does control that apparently, but they can't control what their suppliers do, they say. And... Uh, I'm sure Apple's 
saddened by this as well. OLED screens. Re-education internment camps in, was it Xinjiang? Yeah, they, they, <clears throat> they bring them to, a, this is a China, the Chinese way. They did this in the Cultural Revolution too. They re-educate them, convince them of the error of their ways. You shouldn't be Muslim. Uh, and then, uh, you know, teach them a few slogans. And then they give them the privilege of working in these factories. Um, it's very sad. Uh, the report there um, from the, the Watchdog Group is is available. We'll include a link in the show notes there. For I, don't, the, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know what to do. I, I want to hear from Apple on this one. I really yeah, do. Yeah, well, I, I would imagine, and I hope we do. Uh, well, I'm sure Apple's Cook not can, happy about it. Cook but they in the past have, has responded to this. Yeah, they kind may of not stuff, have a lot so. of choice. They have, in the past, done what they could, I thought, to improve conditions at Fox. Certainly in their, yeah, there are rules they've put in yeah. place, but I see the sort of conversation there about third you know where they get the supplies right. from um now this part made me a little uh this this story made me a little weird your heart rate never gets over 120 beats per second okay right oh you mean in, oh i see what you mean you, go well, ahead it, tell it, us what this story well, okay is. so it says should consumers be wary of apple's heartbeat monitoring app um and and so this, I've actually, yes, my heart rate has uh, gotten over 120 beats so, per... So this study says, and Apple has never claimed any otherwise, that the AFib detector in the Apple Watch doesn't work if your heart rate is raised, elevated past 120 beats. Yeah. It's just inaccurate. Yeah. So at any any uh, indication of AFib or any missing indication of any false positive or false negative, it's got to be under 120 beats per minute. They I've always in, cautioned people. <laughs> I think the AFib feature is great, but that but. it is not a replacement for a physician, and it's not diagnostic. It's right. just information, um, and and you know this doesn't surprise me. It's not. This is a watch. It's well, a consumer it says, device. I mean, it says in the thing. Anytime I've had my heart rate be above one hundred and twenty, and did a the AFib. Does stuff, it tell you? It says it just put, it puts inconclusive is how it says. Ah, it. that's good to yeah. know. Okay, so, it so they it, aren't giving you a result. No, they don't okay. give you a result if it's over. I misunderstood that. Rate. I thought they were still giving you a result. Oh, no, okay. They won't, they won't give you a result good. if it's above a certain. And it actually, actually, if I remember correctly, it even says your heart rate is over. Blah blah it's blah. Too much. So it's inconclusive. Lie down, relax. Yeah, yeah chill out. Yeah. Um, so mine's, yeah, mine's a little high right now. It's seventy-eight. Mine is normally okay. It's it was that way before I went into the hospital and found out I was gluten intolerant. Yeah, but that's, that's the thing when I you have issue. an issue and maybe AFib's contributing, your heart rate might be high. Yeah, exactly. And so to not be able to tell if you've got this does AFib not is, replace, in yeah. other words, a true true diagnostic. Agreed. Uh, would you like to tell us about a place where we can lay down? But and first, be I'm going to tell you about my heart rate. Oh, yeah. Well, what is your heart rate? I don't right know. Now? Uh, <laughs> inconclusive. It's inconclusive. <laughs> Must be over 120. Our show today brought to you by our mattresses. Ah. Oh, don't you love the Casper? Casper, the friendly mattress. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, there, there's the uh, Casper. Now, they, in that box, that little box, notice I'm ready for it. I've got my jammies on. I'm opening it up. That little box contains a king-size mattress. I don't know how they do it. And this is, by the way, the new hybrid which has springs in it. I don't know how they do it, but somehow magically when you open it up, it goes and it suddenly becomes a full-size, king-size mattress. But I love it that it's so compact. Uh, that's just one of many features. Casper is an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the cost because they eliminate the middleman. No mattress store. And they have the best obsessively engineered mattresses cleverly designed to mimic human curves providing supportive comfort for every kind of body, including mine. You spend a third of your life sleeping, so you really need to be comfortable. It need to be a, you know, Micah, you did a podcast on sleep for a long time. You know, you have to sleep cool. Would you say 68 degrees? Yeah, 65 to 68 degrees. Yeah, you have to sleep cool. Casper does that. Their breathable design makes sure you're always cool. Uh, the supportive memory phone gives you a quality sleep surface with the right amount of sink and bounce. And that's kind of magical. That's the original Casper mattress. 20,000 reviews, an average of 4.8 stars. I don't know how you get better than that across Casper, Amazon, and Google. It's becoming the internet's favorite mattress. It's certainly mine. So there's the original Casper. There's the Wave featuring a patent-pending premium support system to mirror the natural shape of your body. If, uh, if you're buying a mattress for a college student or funds are tight, you'll like the essential, a streamlined design at a price that won't keep you up at night. And then the hybrid, that's the one I just opened, which 
combines the pressure relief of the award-winning foam, the one you have, Micah, but they also have durable yet gentle springs inside that aids the breathability and also gives me a firm edge so I don't roll out of bed in the morning. I leap out of bed. <laughs> Casper also offers a wide array of other products. Pillows. I love my Casper pillows. Sheets. Mm -hmm. The Casper glow lamp. You're going to love Casper. Now, I did say one thing. They don't have stores. And you might say, well, wh how do I try before I buy? You don't have to. Well, you do. You get to. Just buy the Casper because they have a 100-night risk-free sleep-on-it trial. If any t at any point in the 100, first 100 nights, it's more than three months, you say, that's not for me, they will come and get it, refund you every penny. You don't even have to box it back up. Free shipping, painless returns in the U.S. and Canada. Get a mattress from Casper today. In fact, save $100 right now towards select mattresses by visiting Casper, C-A-S-P-E-R.com, slash iOS today. Use the code iOS today at checkout. That's $100 off select mattresses. Casper.com slash iOS today. Use the promo code iOS today at, at uh, checkout. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you, Casper for supporting iOS today and for giving us a great night's sleep. Uh, and yes, Reverb Mike, uh, last time I was at Leo's, the, the mattress was still right there in the foyer. Oh, yeah, I couldn't it's move it. Sleeps, it know. doesn't actually fit through the door once you take it out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I'd be really tempted to leave one in the foyer. It's a great place for it. You just want to <laughs> lie down and take a nap. The cats love it. No, we, we put it back. <laughs> we didn't leave it out there. Uh, all right, we've got some questions. The first comes from Keith. Uh, Keith says that he is from somewhere east of Indiana instead of from somewhere in Indiana. Thank you, Keith. Uh, <laughs> how difficult would it be to port or migrate data from Keychain into LastPass? Oh. Is there an idiot's guide? Uh, well, you're not an idiot, and that is an important thing. I, I, I really cut and paste. I really harp on this because it's people, be an easier way than that. The, well, there it's a little easier. Um, so LastPass does support importing of certain uh, from certain other. I have done managers. that. I've moved it into LastPass. It was a long time ago, but mm -hmm. when I went to LastPass, I I did that. You can also export, and I've done that as well. You can export it as a comma, se comma separated value. Exactly. Import it into many other password managers if you want to move out. Yeah. So that's what we're going to talk about here. Is that uh, is there an export for Keychain? It, yes. Oh, good. Yeah. So it's kind of a two step guide here. You first need to export your Keychain items, which you can do from the Mac. Um, you, you have to be logged in. You lo yeah, you log in. It. It's it's a simple file export option. Uh, you want to choose the the proper format, which comma separated value format is CSV. good. CSV. The important thing is that if you do the CSV, uh, LastPass has on their site a little guide that shows you importing from importing from CSV. a generic CSV. You want to use the template that they have in place, so that way it imports it properly. So they're going to have uh, values in different locations and make sure that you get you know username goes here, password goes here. So the the way that their uh, template goes is the URL comma, the username, comma, the password, comma, any other information, uh, so including extras, you, name, do, grouping. Do you massage the data before you try to import it? or? Yeah, like kale, you know. <laughs> you just want to... Massage it lightly. Just massage Rub it. some oil into it. Um, there was, a while, for a while, a bug in the browser plugin import, which was importing into the browser on Macs. Okay. And um, for a while, uh, it was recommended uh, that you use the Mac app to do the import. But the last time I checked it, I think that's been fixed. Yeah, so if you've here. got the Mac app, use the Mac app. Sad to say, uh, LastPass is discontinuing the Mac app. They're going to go all browser-based. Oh. Uh, and that makes sense. It, it was kind of kind of confusing that there was an app, plus there was the browser, and which should you use, and so forth. So they're eliminating the app. But if, if you're going to do this, I would suggest doing it with the app. That did a better job, at least has done a better job in the past of importing. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, thank you, Keith. I assume that you, you only, are a... You only do this once. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then That's it's all the in there. Turn off in Safari, uh, in any browser, you use the ability to store the passwords in the browser. That's never been a good idea. On the keychain, at least the keychain is secure. But turn that feature off so that the browser doesn't say, you want me to save that? You want me to save that? And you just let last save multiple places. That's more places. And yeah. uh, Keith, I assume you're a LastPass user because you've heard our great uh, reads here. They're a sponsor. And they are a sponsor of the network. So How would you know that they were a sponsor? I don't know. What is that? <laughs> if you see the video, you'll know. We are, we are here in the LastPass wink. studios. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, and then I, I like this. Ben from Omaha just has a... 
a little bit of a reading the tea leaves question for us. Do you have any thoughts on WWDC? It's only four months from now. Uh, what do you think Apple has in store? It's a little less than four now. It's yeah. going to be almost exactly three. What are what predictions do you have, Leo? Uh, well, we, one thing we always know is there'll be a new version of Mac OS and a new version of iOS. I'm very interested in iOS 14. Uh, remember that when they did iOS 13, they said, we're not going to add a lot of features. We're going to make it better. We're going to get rid of the bugs. We're going to settle on solidity. In fact, I think Apple's moving to a TikTok cycle mm -hmm. where they do, you know, the kind of the the stabilization version and that means 14 would be the let's see some hot new features we're already seeing leaks of some interesting features including by then absolutely apple tags yes which is their you know their their competitor to tile and tracker which is a, a bluetooth a smart tag but apple has a nice feature uwb that'll let you point your phone and it'll say it's over there you know you're getting warmer warmer i think that's going to be great i can't wait to see I those i can't wait to see it either we yeah. might see some other uwb features too this is kind of one of the features Apple put in the iPhone and they haven't exploited yet. Yeah. So except for AirDrop, where you can point at who you're airdropping to. So I'd like to see more of that. We'll see improvements to AR Kit. There are always improvements there, whether it's the a new obvious version. stuff, right? Um, yeah. Um, Will they announce new MacBooks? I don't. They have in the past. I, not guaranteed that it's they would. I would like event, to see them announce new MacBooks because it's developer conference, right? And developers use MacBooks. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see the keyboard, which I think is quite quite adequate. In the MacBook Pro 16-inch, mm -hmm. I'd like to see that extended Just to a MacBook to Air. I love the MacBook Air, and I would use it if it had a better keyboard. Yeah. And I'm really wondering what's going to happen to the MacBook, their thinnest, lightest, dumbest Macintosh. <laughs> there, is, there is a rumor. If anything were to be uh, based on an ARM chip, it would be the MacBook. Now, I don't think Apple will announce an ARM-based Macintosh this year. Okay. Um, there was, you know, a little bit of a rumor from Ming Chi Kuo, the famed tea leaf reader, mm -hmm. uh, that that 2021 would bring us an ARM-based Macintosh. If there is one, it's going to not be a Power Mac, you know, the Mac Pro or the or the MacBook Pro. It's going to be a lightweight, long battery, a little bit slower Mac. The perfect candidate would be the MacBook. So I don't think Apple will announce a MacBook at WWDC, but they remember if we're going to put out an arm based computer we're going to have to get people to start thinking you know catalyst is not enough that's right. the technology they use to move ios apps to mac i feel like they're going to have to say to developers all right new tools we're in beta we're going to start doing some stuff because we yeah. want to get ready if they're thinking a macbook with an ARM chip in 2021, this would be the WWDC that you start really, talking about it. Yeah. You don't announce it necessarily, but you start talking about ARM. Because Catalyst in the past has not involved uh, too much information for for the developers. It's been really Apple playing around with it and showing, okay, we're going to do the home app on Mac. We're going to do this on Mac. We're going to do this right. on Mac. And to actually have that now be out there and have developers be able to take advantage of it in a big way, I think that, yeah, this is probably going to be... Something and to look for that anyway. On WWDC stage, or if we see it at the State of the Union afterward, will be interesting. Or maybe even just... Uh, uh, in this case, I don't think they want to make a big a splash about it. I think they just want to fill in developers, so maybe it'll just be a track. Could be. You know, developing for ARM. Yes. <laughs> How to make sure your ARM apps will work on all platforms, mm. something like that. Yeah. Uh, I also am curious, there has been a rumor that Apple might put an AMD processor in one of their next Macintoshes. I wonder if that might why? be something they announce. Uh, AMD, <laughs> why? Well, there are, there are a few reasons. Uh, AMD is coming along and they've done some pretty amazing processors. Uh, nothing great for mobile yet. But there is a rumor there might be an AMD laptop. Microsoft's already done it with their Surface uh, Book. Uh, and there's also an advantage to ARM because or AMD because it's less expensive. <clears throat> and Apple has been somewhat frustrated by the slow pace of development <laughs> from Intel. And so getting uh, the AMD folks up and running and uh, an equal partner would, if nothing else, be a goad to Intel to keep up. So I think strategically... They might, you might hear about AMD 
uh, in June at the uh, WWDC. All what fair else? predictions. Yeah, yeah. I don't really have any sort of uh, wild predictions or anything. I think it, the WWDC tends to be what we expect. So Swift is going to be a big story, and Apple's always. really moving everybody over to Swift. So yeah. I expect that to be a continuing story with Apple. Yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised That's if there's language. less being announced this year because last year it was huge. There was so much yeah. that they've really kind of got to follow up with that. I think we're going to see some improvements or more clarification on all of the gatekeeping features on Mac oh. OS that just actually that's a big story horrible. because the notarization uh, of oh, all apps right. does begin this spring I mm -hmm. think and that's a requirement that all apps must be notarized by uh, notarized by Apple they're stepping up the gatekeeper requirements good thing makes it more secure but it's going to be a, a real concern to developers who perhaps don't want to go through that process uh, people who develop stuff for themselves. There's lots of questions about this. So that's going to be that's another topic. QTNA, questions that need answers. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be a big one, too. I thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, Gatekeeper. I, you know, Apple's done a lot to make their platform much more secure. And Gatekeeper is one of the big technologies that protects Mac OS. Mm, I don't know. No, I don't boy. know. Oh, my God. I love How that. does he do that? I don't know. It's magic. magic. <laughs> All right, we're going to uh, put our funny hats on in a second. We, we? are, yeah. But we first, are. a word from our sponsor. I had a great experience with Zapier uh, the other day. As you know, I use Zapier for so many things home automation. I use it at work all the time. We have a wonderful script that I use that uh, helps me prepare the shows. Every time I do a bookmark, it automatically tweets it. We have a, a Twitter account called links underscore four underscore twit. And it sends it to Karsten via a spreadsheet that he has on Google Drive. That's what Zapier does. It lets you make multi-step zaps uh, to automate the things you do over and over again. They've just added a new feature that I'm really excited about. Uh, kind of a conditional feature. So that you can have this. It, what's nice about Zapier, it's programming without being programming. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a developer or an engineer to understand it. It's very simple. Think of it as a, as a business workflow tool that automates the things you do over and over. But they keep adding features that make it more and more sophisticated. And it makes me excited because I think, oh, I could use that to do this and so forth. The other day I had a problem. One of the uh, tools I use, one of the integrations I use, uh, had stopped working. Apparently, the developer at the website that I was integrating into uh, had just kind of turned something off or broken something. And I sent a note to Zapier, and they responded within 24 hours with a really great, very friendly response with a workaround that absolutely worked. They said, we're in touch uh, with Mache. We're going to see if we can get him to fix this problem. But until then, try doing it this way. It worked. Oh, nice. And so I really... Not only is Zapier a service you're going to want to use in so many ways, not only is it a great service, but I have to say their support was phenomenal. I don't, I, I don't say that all the time. This really is amazing. Zapier connects with over 2,000 apps. So that's the, the beginning is you say, okay, when this, you need a trigger, right? When this happens, when the sun goes down, you use a weather app to determine sunset. Or uh, when I get an email at Gmail, or when we have a new, uh, a new entry in Salesforce, a new client, then do some things. And you can do multi-steps. Uh, for instance, you could have it set up to automatically engage leads or uh, important new customers or notify your team about opportunities because it integrates with all the CRM programs, all the sales tools that you use. This is a list. We're scrolling through the list. We could scroll all day because there's 2,000 tools that Zapier integrates with. It's also more customizable than the other guys because they use multi-step zaps. So that's what I use. That's great because one zap does a bunch of stuff. And it's kind of cool. You can, you can actually see how much time you've saved. On average, there are four and a half million people who use Zapier. On average, each of them saves 40 hours a month. 40 hours a month. A whole work week. It's, it's amazing. Zapier.com slash iOS. I want you to connect the apps you use the most and let Zapier take it from there. Build a solution you need minutes. No developer, no engineer. It makes you feel powerful, and it saves you so much time. Make more time to do what you love. Grow your business. Right now, through the end of the month, try Zapier free. 
free for two weeks. Go to Zapier, Z-A-P-I-E-R dot com slash I-O-S. Zapier dot com slash I-O-S. I am such a big fan. Zapier. We love you. Zapier dot com slash I-O-S. All right, where's my hat? I need a hat. It's time to be put very, on the very, hats. very quiet. quiet. <laughs> He's hunting. I'm hunting wabbits. wabbits. And I'm hunting. Wait a minute, Twain Wilds. We're, we're, we're competing now because oh, you're you're oh. a little bit Disney. I'm a little bit Warner Brothers. Whoa. I don't know. I, uh, oh no! <laughs> there, there's Mickey. Oh, Mickey. Oh, hi. <laughs> Hello, Mickey. Hello. Oh, please don't shoot we're, me with your gun. <laughs> oh. We're going hunting for the best apps <laughs> of the day. That's right. Uh, no. We we wear these hats, these hats we wear, these wonderful, willy, silly apps. I'm going to wear this to St. Louis. Yeah, stay warm. Because it's cold. Yeah, you got polar vortex situation going oh, yeah, on over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Wabbit season, duck season, wabbit season, duck, duck season. season. Uh, we wear these apps to honor our app picks of the week, yes. the apps we're using that we love, that we enjoy. And I am so excited to tell y'all. Uh, I've talked about this app before on the show, but not in depth here, and not, certainly not as my app pick of the week. But my mom was just recently here. And I flew her in and, you know, obviously flew her back because there's only so much time you can spend. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, <laughs> Mom, you're getting on an airplane tonight. Yeah, so let's go. Let's go. Uh, so there's an app called Flighty. That's F-L-I-G-H-T-Y. And it is the best app Flighty. for flight tracking oh, ever. Oh, I've never used this one. It has the best, fastest notifications. Oh, I need this. I need See, this. the problem is you. Some of the uh, the the apps that belong to the companies that you're buying tickets from, when they tell you there's a delay, they you know they have these sort of like marketing speak in yeah, there. Yeah, I hate that. Well, we may be running a little bit behind, but everything's fun. No, I just want the details. I want to know it as quickly as possible. That is what Flighty does. Flighty not only can tell you. All of the notifications you need to know, the the uh, gate stuff and all that, but it can also predict delays. So I got notifications that were saying, hey, uh, SFO is experiencing many delays and your flight may or may not be delayed from takeoff. Oh, that's really important. You, you, to know ahead of time yes. and to have that information available. Huge. It also, over time, will log... I know for you, Leo, you probably like this. It logs your miles so you can kind of see, oh, these are all the different places that I've been. Uh in, in the past and it will it tells you everything you need to know about the plane so how old the plane is what model of plane it is it will tell you uh where the plane's coming from where it's going to it'll tell you the schedule of that plane in the past like how often it's been delayed wow. or how often it's uh, been Let on time a flight in here this is good now i some of those features do require a subscription, nine dollars a month, fifty dollars a year. Yes, uh, but let me just see what I can do for free here. And, so and the reason why, flight. while he's looking up a flight, the reason why they uh, charge nine dollars a month, fifty dollars a year, is they have to pay for this flight oh. data. And oftentimes, one flight is getting data from multiple flight sources, so that they can give you as much information as possible for a given flight. Um, it tells you the, of course, takeoff and landing information. It'll tell you, uh, it'll show Ooh, you on a map. Get a little map cool. of the flight. Yeah. So when my mom was on her way back to Missouri, I actually got to see the plane. It shows the plane on the flight as it goes. Oh, I you love see that. where they are yeah. along the way. Yeah. That's nice if you have a loved one on the plane. Yeah. Or if you're just Snoopy. Yeah, exactly. But so now, um, is this going to tell me anything about, uh, anything else? Is it? Well, Time zone change, arrival weather. Right, oh my go. gosh, arrival forecast. Oh, it's blurring it. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah. Those Where's things. My plane? Where is the plane currently? Those things. Currently. Are... Wow, that's cool. Uh, ah, estimated based on the past. Yes. The, the plane type. It shows you what uh, what time it took off and whether that is what they thought it was going to be. Right. Uh, so it can do plus or minus, you know, five days or what have you. All right, I'm a, you. You can you convince me. I'm gonna try the pro. Yeah, give it a try and see yeah. if you like it. It's a two week trial. It was so helpful for me though that um, I knew what time I needed to be in at SFO to pick up my mom, what gate she was going to be at, information like that. That's really handy. Um, yeah. And then yeah, it even like it'll show you the weather. And so oh, this is interesting. Fifty eight percent early. Yeah, that yeah. it shows you that flight. 
how often it is early. It's often early. Nine percent of the time it's canceled, though. That's not. That's so kind good. of a. That's kind of a big that's number. That's not there. so good. Yeah. Um, arrival weather. That's nice. Fifty degrees, overcast. This is really great. And then I love this stuff. How yeah. old is the plane I'm going to be oh on? Oh my god! When was its first flight? Its first flight was in 2001. It's an 18 year old plane. Wow. Wow. Um, oh, and then easy access to contact the uh, airline, which is kind of nice too, if you need to. Huh. And then the record of changes down at the bottom, that's the whole kit and caboodle. That that's has the all the number. information. And it'll show you this is what you when you were supposed to be taking off, this is what it is now, wow, et cetera. That is really neat. Yeah, there's so much information in the Flighty app, and they really do a good job. Like I said, they they are pulling from many sources that they have to pay for to to provide this information. I should add my return flight. Uh, and those oh, there you go. I think it's showing you. Oh. Atlanta oh, to that's St. From Louis. Atlanta. No. That no. Right. <laughs> it doesn't uh, I guess it doesn't I didn't give it the uh Reservation number. So. Oh, I see. I was. I'm wondering. So where that is going to be my flight. Is going to be March sixth. Data. What? Oh, that's my next. No. Can I just type in? Oh, pick from calendar. Yes, I can. Friday. Okay. St. Louis to San Francisco, and I see it's going back to Burbank on the rest of the way. So this is good. These are my upcoming flights. That's really cool. And I could see what what kind of plane that one going home is going to be. How old is this plane? Probably it's the same plane. I'd be my guess. Uh, they don't know that that it hasn't. Oh, it must have not picked. Hasn't it picked up the uh, tail number yet. Huh. All right, I like this. Yeah. I like that. I'm a little. I mean, it's a little expensive, fifty bucks a year. But uh, if you flew all the time, I think it'd be nice. Yes, to have all that information. it is for. It's definitely for that. So you pay for it. Uh, yeah, right now because I kind of. You you can pay per month. I get it whenever I'm about to do a flight. Buy it for a month, yeah. selling nine bucks. Yeah. That's smart. That's yeah. really smart. Because I don't fly enough to have it for the flighty. flighty. It's flighty. got a good name too. Yeah. So I know you like to take pictures. I do. Uh, we all do. We've seen a number of programs that do what Enlight's new program, Pixel Loop, will do. Uh, Enlight is a really a great uh, photo editing tool, and maybe be worth getting all the Enlight apps uh, together. But in this case, I, I'm not going to. Actually, I think I already do have some of the other ones. But this, what this will do, let me uh, let me let me go back in time. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Let me let me load in a picture. That's what we want to do. So you want to get a picture that has something going on with it, either water or clouds. This one's a good one. This is a boat picture I took that has both water and clouds. Now we can animate it. So this was a still picture, mm -hmm. right? Um, I can animate it. Uh, I can set a path for the water since we're going that way. I should do that. Right, I can anchor some things. Like uh, we definitely want to anchor the boat. <laughs> we don't want to animate the boat, do we? That would be cray cray. <laughs> yep. I can say what speed I want, and we're gonna, and then let's just play it and see what happens. Oh, how? What? How? How? How did it do that? What the? Now here's a little problem. The clouds are going in the other direction, so I neglected to animate the clouds in the right direction. However, Wait, you get the why idea. Why are the clouds moving though? Because well. This is actually, I think I did a previous oh, animation. Oh, okay. I this. just thought it was smart enough to know. Um, it is pretty smart. This is the original picture. Oh, Let's my goodness. Go you way. changed the clouds? Oh, you changed. I changed everything, baby. If you've got a picture, let me, I wonder if I can start fresh. Let me start new project. There we go. Let's start with the, uh, let's stick with it. Stick with this one. I'll just go back it up. I've undoed it all the way. That's okay. the original picture. Okay. Okay. Now, there's other things I can, I can do with this. They have a, there's a whole bunch of really nice uh, tools here. So right now, animate it, nothing happens. Got it. <laughs> right? But I want to take a look at some of the tools. So I can have the water. And there's a variety of waters. Now, a lot of these aren't going to make a lot of sense. Um, like, that looks like I'm in a pond. Right. Which I'm not. I'm in the ocean. So, you you know, you're going to want to pick the water that makes the most uh, sense. Not that one. You can also pick skies. So that sky is not a bad sky, and I could animate that sky, but I could also animate that sky or that sky wow. or that sky or that sky. You People are going to think, wow, you're amazing. <laughs> you're truly <laughs> you amazing. Just... How did you How did you get that picture? You know what? I do not like the water here. We're going to get some better water. 
That's not so bad. Now remember, I haven't done path a Ooh. path yet. So that one was a little bubbly. I liked that. It's bubbly, isn't it? So let me let me do none and uh, and put a path on it. Okay. Of my own. There's also a effects. Path of your own the fa effects are kind of odd. <laughs> oh, hearts! I'm having hearts fly off the bridge for some reason. <laughs> um, you can have birds. <laughs> you can have, and you can make them go so in different directions or from different spots, right? So. Um, oh, so from the vanishing point. Yeah. So yeah, obviously it's silly for me to have those birds coming from the bridge. I don't know how to move them off the bridge, but uh, <laughs> maybe. Oh, that's probably has to do with the anchor points. Anyway. <laughs> Um, all these birds and these all these clouds. birds we were on a boat and suddenly we were attacked by birds <laughs> you can do overlays alfred hitchcock was there of all kinds oh look at wow. that look at that <laughs> oh it was a little foggy that night <laughs> at sea this thing want to do want a little thunderstorm <gasps> want a little oh. how about a little lightning scarecrow oh, goodness and uh this is i mean look at all these it's freaking out the birds look at all these I can have strange geometric uh, objects <laughs> appearing. I, I shouldn't have taken the brown acid. Uh, I can flying hearts. Angel hearts. I mean, I'm this thing is endless. Oh, glitch. I glitch. love a glitch. There's a little glitch. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. That's, a, that's an effect that does not come with it. <laughs> you can have 3D motion. I don't even know what I'm going to get with 3D motion. Uh, this is oh. one of those. Uh, Wow, that's a little scary. Um, <laughs> okay, I did take that acid, didn't I? Yeah. Wow. Oh dear. This is an oh. amazing simulation of illness. <laughs> so it's called motion, all, motion sickness yeah. in an app. You can add multiple elements, and you get some oh, control over this. So I can have a couple a... of a butterflies if I uh, if I want to, <laughs> Might as or well. just a piece dove flying through the air. What? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I've truly ruined this. <laughs> it's good I started with a good one, right? Is this a Lisa Frank uh, binder? Yeah, it kind of is, isn't it? Yeah. I'm undoing all of the uh, things that I've done. Notice I can step all the way through it, which is fantastic. Even all the different clouds. Back to the original picture. This is really a lot of fun. So let me, I'll show you the one that I, uh, that I saved from previous. Is this it? No. Oh, shoot. Did it lose the... Uh... Oh, this is actually the, the uh, tutorial, which I highly recommend. Obviously, I didn't learn very well in the tutorial. <laughs> oh, hearts plenty. So I, oh, I really like this. Now, now, it's not free, unfortunately. Um, I could show you some of the things. Five ninety nine a month, nineteen ninety nine a year, or that. sixty bucks for a one time purchase. So they added to this. They added some snow falling. They added the skiers. Oh, snow going and a little those little uh, bouquet. Yeah, there was a program that did this that Ray, Trey Ratcliffe had worked on, but it was not nearly as sophisticated as this. I remember that one. Yeah, these folks at Enlight really seem to know a lot about uh, how to modify this. This is a great way to really just. I was impressed with the way they deceive, did the clouds. They deceive looked real. people. Yeah, look at that. Wow, there's an avalanche behind. I mean, yeah, it kind of looks like it, doesn't it? Wow. Uh, maybe it's a moody sky avalanche. <laughs> uh, I I just yeah the sky is completely amazing. And apparently I'm getting northern lights as I ski off into the distance. So you're, you're gonna I mean this is just the beginning of all the things you can do with this. This thing is is kind of amazing. Let's see what they did with this. Now I think with snow with skies with water it's pretty obvious. What are they gonna do with this Make young lady sitting blow, in a window? Maybe? Oh, her coffee steaming. Oh. So my suggestion is subtle. Yes. That's nice, isn't it? Yes. If you put that on Instagram, yeah. people would look at it and say, that's a nice, they wait go, a minute, oh, is that coffee steaming? What? <gasps> what the heck? How cool. And is she's it? so still. Yeah. She should work at Disney. So I've got all the features, but uh, I thought it was worth it. But it is, just so you know, it's not free. Let's see what they've done with this one. I'd like to, I like to see, I mean, it's pretty amazing what they've done. Look at that. Just birds flying around. See, I and think the subtlest is the best. Yeah. I'd almost take the birds out, leave the water doing its little thing. Yeah. Yeah, the sky doesn't really work there. Very yeah, cool. I don't know about the birds. But anyway, yeah, that's uh this is uh called Pixaloop. Pixaloop from Enlight. 
Uh, all of Enlight stuff is good. We've talked about Enlight's other uh, yeah, programs. Got, what, you might five. want to look at the Enlight package, but uh, Pixel Loop for sure is uh, just really great, and the effects are kind of remarkable. Um, not every picture, just and do it subtly. Mm -hmm. Don't don't make people think they just don't took a, a bad mushroom. Yet. But uh, yeah, there you go. That's my app cap. Well, that's a very good app cap, Leo Laporte. Oh, that's a really good app cap you got there. Oh, be very quiet. I'm hunting apps. <laughs> uh, we do this show. Uh, we do this show every uh, every Tuesday, right after Leo votes. Go vote if you're in the Go Super vote. Tuesday Go state. Vote. I got my sticker. Uh, and uh, it's nice to have a say for a change yeah. in what's going on in this fine land of ours. Nice Ooh. to have a say. My, um, <laughs> never mind. You, if you, if you, remember, remember, kids, if you don't vote, you don't get to complain. Uh, actually, <laughs> I mean, you can do what you want, but nobody can stop you from complaining. So complain away. Don't complain about this show, though. Every uh, Tuesday, <laughs> 9 a.m. in the Pacific time zone, that's noon Eastern. That would be, uh, if I can do some quick math, plus eight, carry the one, I think 1,600 UTC. 1,700 UTC, okay. It's close. You know, we're going to change the times next soon. Oh, yeah, times yeah. are changing. Yeah, time, the times, the times are changing. they are So we'll have to do the math again, all over again. Wait, isn't that, that's really soon. No, it's like two weeks or less. Next week, maybe. I think it's next week. Next week, Mickey. There you go. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, <laughs> We are really annoying people now. They're glad the show's over. Uh, if you want to watch us, do it live, twit.tv slash live, or get tickets. They're free. Tickets at twit.tv. We'd love to see you in the studio audience. You can also get on-demand versions of everything we do, audio and video, from our website. In this case, twit.tv slash iOS. Or subscribe in your favorite podcast application or on YouTube. That way, you know, you'll get it the minute it's available. I love doing iOS today. I hope you enjoy watching it. We appreciate your being here. If you've got a question, ask Micah. Yeah, you just send it in to iOS today at twit.tv. Uh, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on iOS today. Bye. Bye. -bye.